Welcome back to the MSAG's COVID-19 series. In our previous lessons, we've covered an overview of COVID-19, how the UK government handled the pandemic, and the impact of COVID-19 on patients and medical research. In this lesson, we will look at the impact of COVID-19 on education, specifically before university. We'll focus on universities in our next video. The COVID-19 pandemic and the associated lockdown has had a severe impact on every aspect of education in the UK. The risk of serious illness or death from COVID-19 is very low for young people, those aged 18 and under. On the 28th of August 2020, a study in the British Medical Journal found that children and young people usually have much less severe infections of COVID-19 than adults. They also found that admission to critical care was associated with age under one month, age 10 to 14 years, and non-white ethnicity. The American Academy of Pediatrics found the death rate of children who tested positive for COVID-19 in states that reported COVID-19 data was between 0 and 0.05%. So young people have a low risk of serious illness. However, they can still transmit the disease to older people who are more susceptible to serious illnesses. There's also been a significant impact on children and young people due to the lockdown causing disruption to their life and education. Briefly, let's cover what's happened to school children in the UK. By the 20th of March 2020, all schools in the UK had closed for all in-person teaching, except for a few selected students. The rest of teaching took place online. Primary and secondary schools in England began to reopen in June of 2020, although most school children continued to study from home through online lessons. In September of 2020 for the new school year, all school pupils returned to in-person teaching, with COVID-19 secure measures in place. However, following a resurgence in COVID-19 cases, schools across the UK closed on the 5th of January 2021 until February half-term at least. The restrictions and guidelines associated with this mirrored that of the lockdown in March 2020, with teaching returning to online, except for children of key workers and children considered vulnerable. As of March 2021, children are still at home, and teaching is once again taking place online. Although this lesson focuses on the impact of COVID-19 on education, it's important to consider the impact on parents as well. One third of parents report that their monthly earnings have decreased since February of 2020. This means less resources to spend on children, and added stress for parents. Parents are often having to work from home as well as support their children in homeschooling. The lockdown has made parents almost entirely responsible for childcare, leaving little time for leisure or relaxation. In 2014, some 70% of parents reported having a leisure time at around 7 p.m., whereas during lockdown, only 40% did. This left very little slack in parents' days, which could impair on parental well being and negatively affect children's welfare. We briefly mentioned it, but let's dive more into homeschooling across the UK. One of the biggest impacts of COVID-19 on children has been the switch to homeschooling and online learning. However, there's a large variation in how this is delivered across the UK. We'll first consider learning time, which is the amount of time the child spends on learning. Before lockdown, learning time was fairly equal for primary school children in the UK. In the 2020 lockdown, the richest third of primary school children spent about four and a half hours per week more on learning than the poorest third of primary school children. The net result was that children from wealthier backgrounds were spending about 30% more time on learning and education than children from poorer backgrounds. There have also been differences between schools. Around half of primary schools and nearly 60% of secondary schools offered some active learning materials, such as online classes or online chats. These online resources were 37% more likely to be provided to the richest third of primary school children than the poorest third of primary school children. This was also seen in secondary school children to a lesser degree. These resources were 24% more likely to be provided to the richest third of secondary school children than the poorest third. Another aspect of homeschooling that varies between children is differences in home resources. Some children do not have a quiet place to work due to a lack of space at home. Some children do not have access to laptops or the internet needed to access online learning. Kate Anstey, project lead at Child Poverty Action Group, said, We spoke to thousands of parents, carers, and children, and the thing we heard was that up to 40% of them did not only not have access to a laptop or the internet, 
but also to things like printers, even stationery, and craft materials. There is some good news. The government and other organizations and businesses have been trying to help resolve some of these issues. There have also been nationwide virtual learning initiatives to help give all students access to high-quality online lessons. Oak National Academy was created in April 2020 as a rapid response to the coronavirus outbreak. More than 40 teachers and colleagues from leading education organizations came together to support schools' efforts to keep children learning. The website offers free, high-quality video lessons and resources. Another large learning resource was BBC Bite Size, which provided a range of resources to help children and parents. The BBC Bite Size website had 1.6 million individual users on the day its lockdown learning program was launched. Although not strictly an educational resource, it's hard not to mention Joe Wicks when discussing homeschooling. Joe Wicks is a celebrity fitness coach in the UK, commonly known as the Body Coach, and he became famous during lockdown for his free YouTube live workouts. He live-streamed PE with Joe every weekday at 9am during the first lockdown and earned himself the title of the nation's PE teacher. Access to a laptop or tablet, as well as internet access, was seen as a top priority for remote online learning. The Department for Education provided laptops and tablets to help pupils with access to remote education during COVID-19. As of the 31st of January 2021, the UK government has delivered more than 927,000 laptops and tablets as part of its bid to get more than a million devices to schools and colleges during the COVID-19 crisis. Some businesses have also tried to support children's education. For example, mobile customers with O2, 3, Vodafone, EE, BT, Virgin, Sky, and Plusnet were able to access Oak National Academy for free while schools were closed, even if they were out of mobile internet data. Now let's move on to a topic that may even have affected you directly, the school exam result controversy. We can't discuss education without mentioning exams such as the GCSEs and A-levels. On the 20th of March 2020, the UK government announced that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, all secondary education examinations due to be held in 2020 were cancelled. Students still needed exam results, and so a plan was put in place to give students a final grade. The original plan was that teacher-predicted grades would be combined with an off-qual moderation algorithm, which would calculate final grades. There were two key pieces of information used by the moderation algorithm to help calculate the final grades, and this included how students had been ranked in ability and how well their school or college had performed in exams in recent years. This system did not go according to plan, and there were many issues when the A-level results were released on the 13th of August 2020. The moderation algorithm had produced controversial results. 36% of students had one grade lower than teachers predicted, and 3% had two grades lower than teachers had predicted. The moderation algorithm tried to achieve a fairness of grades at a national level. However, it did not allow for outliers, such as talented students from low-achieving schools or a school that was rapidly improving. It was argued that private schools and high-achieving state schools were destined for higher grades due to their previous strong exam track records. Due to lots of public pressure, the UK government decided to change how final grades would be allocated for A-levels. It was decided to regrade students based solely on the original teacher-predicted grades. Before GCSE grades were released on the 20th of August 2020, it was decided that they would also be based on teacher predictions and not based on any moderation algorithms. The use of teachers' predicted grades is still a controversial way of grading A-levels and GCSEs. Data from Ofqual, the UK exams regulator, showed that the percentage of A-star grades rose from 7.7% in 2019 to 14.3% in 2020 using teacher-predicted grades. This means that almost double the amount of A-star grades were handed out for A-levels in 2020 compared to 2019. Grades A and above rose from 25.2% in 2019 to 38.1% in 2020, while the proportion of B or above grades rose from 51.1% to 65.4%. These statistics provide evidence that teachers' predictions are likely to be higher than actual performance, 
and that Ofqual has effectively given the 2020 cohort of students artificially higher grades than previous years. When schools in the UK closed face-to-face -to -face teaching in early 2021, GCSE and A-level exams were also cancelled. The decision was made that grades will be awarded based on teachers' predicted grades alone, rather than the controversial algorithm used in the summer of 2020. Will this decision mean that the 2021 cohort will again achieve artificially higher grade averages than previous years? Definitely something to consider, but only time will give us the data we need to know for sure. That wraps up the first section of the impact of COVID-19 on education. In our next video, we'll look at how universities have been affected by the COVID-19 pandemic and how you can link this information back to medicine. As always, best of luck on your interviews, and we'll see you in the next video.